Good evening and welcome. Sports Report is back. Andy Michelle, Matt Hatfield, basketball action across the state heating up. Playoffs are right around the corner. Can you believe it? It seemed like we just had football finish, yeah. but it's basketball time and we'll start things off on the girls side at Green Run High School for the I Promise Basketball Classic. The Lady Stallions presenting it at Green Run High in Virginia Beach, but it's LC Bird out of Richmond, the 5A state runner up, taking on Wilson out of Portsmouth, both teams at 12 and three overall. LC Bird in the blue and that is a three pointer. Kaylee Williams right off of the bat from the corner. And Sherbert Waller Skyhawks last year mid to the state final losing to Prince of Sand. Wilson trying to get to the state tournament this year in 4A and there they find Taylor Edwards one of their weapons on offense and then another shot is knocked in the silky smooth J by Joan A. Blunt. Back the other way three point we can do that too. Angela Caraballo the other way. Caraballo got to get someone on her and then it, it is Kaylee Robinson knocking it down. 11 to 9 in favor of the Skyhawks on the road in Virginia Beach. Uh oh, Caraballo again. Can't leave her open. Had a foot on the line. It's only a two, but you can't leave her open. Oh, she's got the silky smooth touch, too. And there is Robinson again from way downtown. 16 to 9 as Elsie Bird starting to open it up. They just go back and forth here. Some inside presence, too, there underneath for Wilson. Mariah Coker inside for Roger Smith's presence, but Elsie Bird coming right back with Madison Baum off the window. Here is Blunt again from the outside. There's a lot of girls who can't leave open from outside. They're going to knock them down. And remember, Wilson's in a tough conference. They've got Lake Taylor, Deep Creek, Kings Fork to contend with, so they're preparing themselves for the postseason. And inside there, it is Jakara Bagby for two. Back inside the other way for Williams. And here's Bagby again. We're going to the inside game. Step through move for Bagby. Nice job of Wilson working it inside out. Now you see Edwards going in transition to get the basket to fall. We're deadlocked at 20. This game is tight and it's coming down to the wire. Uh-oh, there's some space and that is a three for William. Use that step back move if you got it in the arsenal. And then a three pointer is money for Jonay Blunt again as Wilson is answering these LC Bird scores, whether it's in the half court or transition. And now LC Bird going to the basket there with Maya Coleman. Squeezing it on the baseline and look at the roll there for Coleman. And then the free throw is good, so a three-point play, but you got to get stops on L.C. Bird, and right now they're just going off the dribble at will as Coleman goes to the rack and attacks. Uh-oh, bad pass and a steal. The quick hands from Caraballo all the way by herself for the finish. 32-26, L.C. Bird in the lead. Wilson trying to rally the troops here. They still got a chance in this one, but they got to get somebody on Caraballo. It's money again. Oh, they keep leaving her, and she's going to keep making you pay. Inside this time is Coleman, and she connects. Some swishes there, and it's now a 10-point LC Bird lead heading to the final stanza and working the ball around the perimeter oh, so nicely. Again. And it's a swish again for Caraballo. She's having a night. That's a pretty good night right there. Maybe we don't think about guarding her. Uh-oh, bad pass. Steal picked up by Blunt. Nobody in front of her, and she takes it all the way in for the easy steal and score. We know Wilson is resilient, so they will not throw in the towel, but they can't stop these threes that are just raining from all over the court. Caraballo again for the Skyhawks. Somebody check the box score. We're just going to have to rename it the Caraballo score. There she is, the free throw line. And another one to ice it, and she does. Caraballo taking care of business. LC Bird taking care of business. 48 35. They move to 13 3 overall as Caraballo and Williams combine for 31 points, while Jalen Copeland and Mariah Coker 12 apiece for Wilson. It's now time to look at some Peninsula District boys basketball action. We've got Bethel and Hampton, rivalry time. Big time rivalry. These guys don't like each other. They played each other a lot. They're used to each other. Bethel in the yellow. In the white at home is Hampton. And right off the bat here is Godwin to Jalen Ray who connects. Oh, he's a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. Now it's Bethel's Justin Ned getting the basket there. He wanted a three-point play. He thought he got fouled. Well, he's going to try again. Ned, this time he kicks it out. Cam Baycoat from three, the brother of the ODU guard. He can shoot. Oh, that Baycoat family, they got basketball in the jeans. And there's Dejour Dickens, the 6'11 center. You really can't guard him if he gets it yeah, up high. Somebody maybe try to, no, no, don't worry about it. Back the other way is Marquise Godwin. You can shoot from out there, though. I'll have to pull up Jay for him. Now we've got perimeter snipers all over the floor. Godwin, Baycoat, Ray, and company. And then it is Corey Joyner to Justin Ray. We're knotted up at 14, heading to the second quarter. Godwin from the corner again as another inbound three for Godwin. And then it is Kyle Foster right back at you for three as Bethel has some shooters to combat Hampton's perimeter attack. Eric Brown trying to get some stops on defense. He's not liking it right now. Perimeter game, inside game. Devin Moore with the finish. 
And then Jalen Ray from straight away. It is good from three-point range. 23-22, Bethel up one. They will increase the lead. Right here is Dejour Dickens gets the offensive rebound, and that generally means it's jam time. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you get in that close with a guy that big, and here's the other side is the finish by Ned. He gets a drive finish, 29-26. It's a three-point game, and now it's a one-point game as Matthias Caver hits the jumper there on the feed from Godwin, but Cam Baycoat, oh, he's got that middle game just like his brother. On a nice fadeaway, but they don't get back on defense. Godwin behind the back off the glass. Oh, a little smooch on the glass. Oh, we're getting up tempo now. Transition here, and then look at the play by Whoa. Ray against Dickens. No harm, no foul there, but Baycoat, it's going to be an assist here. That's, that's not a, a shot. That's a pass that's, to that's Dickens. A pass. He'll say that's a pass. This is not a pass. This is a three. Baco drains it, and it's 44-32, 12-point game. Bethel's defense under Coach Craig Brown really starting to tighten the screws now. 12-point lead, but Godwin, he'll get open here and knock down a three-pointer to give the Crabbers a chance to make a rally. Meanwhile, on the other end, we'll just give it to the giant guy inside, and Dickens stuffs it. Too easy for Dickens. That's a high percentage play, as the <laughs> coaches would say. We want to get the ball inside to the guy who's taller than everybody else. And now, okay. Hampton Bell will fool the Bethel defense here as they go give and go. Devin Moore for two, but Kyle Foster will find Jeremiah Wusu and he knocks down the mid-range J. Two of Wusu's on this squad. 39-52 as we tick closer to the fourth quarter. And there is an Awusu on the inside. Jeremiah Wusu to Dickens. And then it's Josh Awusu. We just call those two guys double trouble. The, the Awusu brothers from football and basketball, the hustle guys for Coach Oof. Brehan, and there's Jalen Ray. He is the playmaker for the Hampton Crabbers. Up ahead, Jeremiah Owusu goes off the glass. Good feed and a long two-point there. You see why Bethel's won 13 in a row and ranked number five in the state in 5A, but here comes Hampton with Quishon Harris from three-point land. Yeah, they're trying to hang around in here. Let's get some offense going here. Let's not give it up. It's an outside shot from Foster, and it's a dagger three. Hampton, though, with Keandre Bellamy, not done as he'll knock down a triple. And then one's pretty good, so let's just do it again. Bellamy again from outside. That's pretty good form right there, and he nails it. Not quite enough, though, is your final. 76-59, Bethel rolls with Dickens leading the way. 19 for him, Cam Bacot had 15, while Jalen Ray and Marquise Godwin, 31 between them and defeat. But Bethel, Andy, one of the hottest teams in the state in Group 5A right now. And we've got more Vice Basketball highlights. Don't go anywhere. Northside and William Bird coming up next right here on Sports Report. Back here on Sports Report, alongside Andy Michaud, I am Matthew Hathaway. Well, Andy, we're now going to check in on some Blue Ridge District basketball action as the William Byrd Terriers play host to the Northside Vikings. William Byrd at 13-4, ranked ninth in 4A, while Northside 16-1, number 3 in 3A. Not a lot of losses, but they lose the basketball there. Michael Bright with the quick steal and finish. And Bill Pope's Vikings last year made it to the 3A State Tournament semifinals, trying to get back there to VCU this season. William Byrd, they have ideas of pulling the mild upset, but this shot will be no good, and that leads to a north side transition opportunity where Nick Price is Ooh, dangerous. Look at the spin move by Nick Price. William Byrd, though, they have three-point shooters. Alex Fitch, this one will be off. And again, north side, when you miss those long threes, it gives them a chance to score the other way. And Kendrick Tucker, he is a dynamic guard, all state uh -huh. a year ago. Look at the spin. They got spin practice over there at Northside, don't they? That's working for them. 16 and 1, trying to go to 17 and 1. But for William Bird to come back, they're going to need those threes to start falling here as they get the screen. No shot available here, but they will continue to move the basketball and find somebody inside as it's Damon Childress dumping it off to Alex Fitch for two. It's patience. You got to work the defense, make sure you get what you want to get, and get a good shot. Now it's Northside trying to do the same thing. We don't need patience. We just got to dush it to the outside to Tucker, and he drills a three. A 16-point lead for Northside at the break, so it's a runaway, or is it? Well, Kendrick Tucker, if he's making step-back threes like that, it is, but that one's off the mark. He gets a second oh, chance, though, and that's a layup. Look at a nice feed inside to Tucker. Never gave up, kept on going. And now that press starting to have an effect there for Northside as they're getting after William Byrd's Ball handlers, and you see right there, Fitch has it. But again, that patience you talked about, Andy, as they continue to move the ball around and find Damon Childress, and he's money from long distance. Want to get back into the game, find 24 if you're on a bird. Back the other way. Now, here's that mayor patience again. There's Childress is going to bring it up. 
Nobody's going to step in front of him? Sure, I'll just keep going all the way to the rack for Childress. Another score. What a year he's averaging, averaging 19.8 points per game, and Childress already with 69 three-pointers made going into the second game in February for the Terriers. But Northside's got Carlos Boogie Basham, oh. who tippy toes and gets the lay-in. We saw him in football, and of course, he's going to Wake Forest to play there at the next level. The reverse. He's not even in the same room when he made that shot. Defense almost gets the steal. Instead, uh-oh, that's the wrong guy. Childress, and he drains the three. Showing off the range to us. He hit that one from three or four feet behind the three-point line. And now Northside's defense trying to get active after those ball handlers. But again, when you leave somebody open from three, it also opens up that inside game. Now they go inside Ooh. to Ryan Dipple, the six-foot-six senior. And the Terriers only down by two with that, that third quarter burst they had. That's a heck of a run right there by William Bird. Could they keep it up, though, into the second half? We go. Bird now trying to get more threes to fall. And Childress is the guy to get it done as he sinks it again from behind the arc. Back outside this time. A long three. No good. Tip. Rebound. Tip. Loose. Bird comes away with it. Oh, there he is again. The step through. Finish with the left hand on the roll for Childress. Oh, the roll. The iron is kind to him. Not unkind. It's kind for Childress. Shot is no good. Rebound for Dipple. But oh, there's a steal for Northside. A miss by Basham. But the putback is there for Devin Russell. Russell working to keep his team in this thing. This is coming down towards the wires. Childress again dumps it off. Olsen from three. Not quite enough though for William Bird, 62-67. Kendrick Tucker leading the way for the Vikings with 23 points, four three-pointers, while Damon Childress had 27 and five assists in defeat for William Bird. They say, Andy, basketball is a game of runs. Northside had the last run. Uh, we're gonna run back to the south side when we come back. We got more basketball action coming up. Stay with us right here on Sports Report. Back to the south side now to a team that is just lost a football coach and Oscar Smith and Richard Morgan, but on the basketball court, they're still rolling. Yeah, Coach Morgan going to Marietta, Georgia, but uh, the basketball team is in the top five in the state in Group 6A as they play host to the Woodside Wolverines. Oscar Smith enters at 15-2 overall. Woodside is 12-3. Woodside is ranked third in 6A. Oscar Smith ranked fourth in 6A. Could that change if the Tigers win this one? Well, this is going to be a battle. We'll find out. Oscar Smith in the white woodside in the dark tip controlled by the Tigers right off of the bat. And they're known for playing fast and furious, but they start the game, Coach LeVar Griffin does, with sort of a patient, deliberate style against that zone defense of Woodside. And we know Oscar Smith wants to shoot it from three, so here's one to start it off. Darren Pugh, no good, but what happens when you play zone? Yep, inside rebounds. you got to clean those up. They don't clean it up, and eventually it's tipped back in. And Isaiah Chambers, the 6'6 sophomore, and uh-oh, there's that Woodside defense, very aggressive here, looking for steals, and Marcus Stubbs gets one right out of the gate, and the Wolverines with a start, strong start in the first quarter. Outside, uh, oh, three-pointer is good. That's Davian from three-point. You see Coach Griffin trying to get his guys to make some adjustments as they're behind early, but Coach Ed Huckabee in year one at Woodside, he knows his team has got the firepower to win this game on the road, even though it is a tricky one here in Chesapeake. But look at the pass, the feed there for Woodside, and the finish is there for Quincy Freeman. Friendly roll for Freeman. Got a steal, nope, got a steal. Yep, yep, finally, yep, we do got it. Down the other way, tipped and good. Eventually put in off the tip by Kyle Brown. Now here's more Brown. What can Brown do for you? Well, for Woodside, he knocks down threes. And there's Chris Orlina with the mid-range jumper. Devontae Carter now, well, getting a little fancy uh, with the basketball and loses it. There's LaShawn Rogers 
and that'll be coast to coast with the lay-in. Too fancy on the pass. However, not done yet. Tigers looking to get some offense going here. Capitalize and keep things going. Deep three, I mean deep three from Hicks. Donald Hicks going to Radford and you see why Mike Jones likes him. He's got range from unlimited area. There's LaShawn Rogers for three, Hicks for three, and Oscar Smith goes from down eight to having a chance to take the lead. There is Chris Orlina. The shot is no good. They get an offensive rebound and they find Jordan Forbes inside for the deuce. Muscling inside underneath was Forbes. Back the other way, Hicks, here he is again. Don't leave him, find 14. He drills another three, and we are in the fourth quarter. Oscar Smith up five. They were down six after two quarters, but they outscored him 21-10 in the third, and there's Devontae Ooh. Carter with a tremendous move. He's athletic and bouncy, that point guard for the Wolverines. Scoop drive back the other way. Hicks says, yeah, I can do that. Uh oh I can't finish, but I can't get an offensive rebound, and I can still score. Not a fan of loving it. They're eating the popcorn, and they're cheering on their Tigers. Step back jumper for Hicks. Oh, oh it's good pretty. in the corner. He is feeling it right now. It's Oscar Smith up seven late in the fourth quarter, just trying to hang on against that pressure. They find the loose man underneath, and Darren Pugh with a strong finish at the rack. It's an experienced Tigers team that last year made the regional semifinals this year, trying to punch their ticket to states. And there's a three in the corner for Quincy Freeman, but that'll be Carter now kicking out to Tajay Jacobs. That Oscar Smith defense is trapping here, and Carter. Inside will feed it to Jacobs for two. And good, furious running comeback there for Woodside. Just not quite enough, though. Tigers going to run the clock out. Final 72-65. Hicks and Devane combining for 44 points. You see Hicks going 4-7 from long distance, while Devontae Carter led the way for Woodside in defeat. 25 points, 7 of 11 from the foul line, 8 rebounds and three assists. We could see those two teams meet up again come playoff time. Now we open with the ladies. Let's finish with the ladies. Let's go back to the girls' side of things. Western Branch taking on Grassfield. It's another Monitor Merrimack Conference 2 showdown. Say that a lot of times real fast. <laughs> Monitor Merrimack Conference. Well, in two years, they'll get rid of conferences and go back to districts, as the VHSL has officially announced. But for now, it's conference play. Who can get that better seed for the tournament coming up in a couple weeks? Oh, here's the steal. J. Lee Johnson the other way, and it's good. That is Western Branch in the blue, Grassfield in the white, if you're wondering. And that is a missed three-pointer from the outside by Johnson. Kiana Johnson, a lot of Johnsons here. The other way, and she scores like a law firm. Johnson, 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 and Johnson. Yeah, I tell you what, Western Branch got a couple of Johnsons with uh, not just Kiana Johnson, but Jasmine Johnson inside is a weapon. There's Kiana with the pull-up, the senior guard for Coach Troy Terry's team. We're really having to do more with starting point guard Carticia Brown out with a knee injury, and they're up by two late in the first period. Close game as we continue on. This will be a deep three by Jay Lee Johnson. Uh, no relation to Jasmine or Kiana, it appears, on, on the other team, <laughs> of course. And Western Branches, there's Kiana Johnson the other way now. That fast break is working for Western Branch. There's Diamond Frost finishing. And on the break there for the Bruins. First highlight not named by Johnson. Back the other way. Here comes Brianna Pugh. Down low to her. It's a two on one. I don't care. I'm going up with it anyway. And she scores. Two defenders doesn't bother her. She's had a big season so far for the Grizzlies, along with Jilly Johnson to lead the way. And all of a sudden, a 9 0 run to close the quarter gives Grassfield a touchdown lead by seven points. Watch the ball movement here. They go around, they go outside, then they go inside, and then they find Jasmine Johnson, and usually that winds up in the hoop. Jasmine Johnson has been a force on the interior for Coach Terry's Bruins for a couple of years now. Junior still got two more seasons to go, but well, one more after this one here. And there's that Western Branch press. They get a steal out of it, and they get a layup, too, as it's Maya Andrews with the finish. They also get some more rebound. This is Kiana Johnson to the outside, and she finds natural Glover in a natural three. And Western Branch heating up from the perimeter. They needed it because they were down by seven. They're all the way up by seven going to the second half. Large swings in this one as we keep going back and forth. Here's Kiana Johnson, baseline, whirl with her right hand off the glass. And they increase that two touchdown swing there. Now can Grassfield get some stops here because Western Branch's offense is finding a rhythm even though Brown is out. And you go inside of Jasmine oh. Johnson, you know she can score with ease. Good ball movement, same play, other side, same result. Back the other way, they still got to find some defense. They still can't find defense, but they do find Glover. And Glover finds the nylon for another three-pointer in Grassfield in trouble. Perimeter shooting working for Western Branch, and they have Johnson inside a 14-point lead. Again, another two-touchdown lead. I know it's basketball, but 
working with some football numbers here for Western Branch. Here's a steal for Grassfield, and they got it in the hands of Jay Lee Johnson, who'll throw it ahead to Reagan Jackson, and she'll go off the window for two. There's some offense. That's what they need. The Grizzlies need to work their way back into this thing. Here's some more offense for them. This is down low, and that is Pew, and she scores again. A little run coming back for the Grizzlies here. And remember, kids, do what Pew did. Use the glass as your friend. Grass for getting a couple of baskets going off the window there. It's a four-point game going to the fourth quarter, and now the absence of Brown showing up because maybe a little fatigue for Western Branch, but when you get fatigued, get tired, go inside to Jasmine Johnson because she doesn't get tired. Yeah, she doesn't get tired. She doesn't miss. You just give her the ball. It goes in the hoop. Western Branch extending its lead and now looking for more here. And they throw it in the corner. Wide open shooter Jessica Jennings, and she'll make Grassfield pay. Big three there, and that would sort of run things out for Western Branch at that point. They take home the 72-56 victory over Grassfield. Jasmine Johnson with a double-double of 23 points and 12 rebounds. Kiana Johnson at 18 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Five steals, filling the stat sheet like a young Andy Michal did when he played. And Grassfield's Jay Lee Johnson had 21 points, 9 of 13 from the foul line. Pew had 16 for the Grizzlies in defeat. Western wow. Branch now 14 and 4 overall. That, that was a good year. That was playing Lakers versus Celtics on Genesis. Oh, okay. Side on the, uh, yeah, Genesis back then, not yeah, Xbox. Yeah. Well, we mentioned some football references during the basketball highlights. We got some football stuff to tell you about. As it was National Signing Day this past week, Andy, the top 10 football signees in the state of Virginia, according to VirginiaPreps.com. Here's where those young men are going. Yeah, you see Levante Taylor headed to from Ocean Lakes to Florida State. Big pickup there for the Seminoles. Scott Bracey out of Benedictine, Richmond area, wide receiver going to Duke. Josh Ball of Stafford, the offensive lineman, headed to Florida State. Here's Jaquan Uli. Remember the big defensive power that Indian River was? They get a linebacker. He's going to Marshall and is going to play Old Dominion a couple times. L.C. Bird, their star, Jalen Elliott, going to Notre Dame as a defensive back. Wayne Davis out of Lake Taylor, defensive back, Gatorade State player of the year, headed to Ohio State. He had a great year for Lake Taylor. And again, they had a guy from Lake Taylor go to Ohio State not too long ago in Jalen Holmes. Patrice Rennie from Episcopal, the private school now, and he's going to North Carolina as a defensive back. A lot of run of defensive backs yeah. here in the top 10. And North Carolina mining the state of Virginia as they get Kyrie Campbell of Woodbridge as well as J.J. McCargo from Bishop O'Connell. Clark Yarbrough from Woodbury Forest, the offensive lineman. Finally, we get an offensive lineman in there. He's going to Stanford, though. He's a smart guy. Yes, he is. He's got a brain if he's going to Stanford. And a couple of guys that didn't make our top 10 here, we want to throw out there as possible impact guys on Saturdays next year, Andy, that we've highlighted. Kevon Wallace, wide receiver, defensive back out of Highland Springs, going to Clemson in the ACC. And another possible impact player could be linebacker Tavante Beckett out of Indian River. He teamed with Yuli. He's heading to Virginia Tech as the Hokies landed him. That's, uh, that's a tough defense they got. They'll pick up some more tough defenders. Well, I think we're out of time. We'll do it next week. For Andy Michal, I'm Matthew Hatfield. We'll catch you next week with some basketball highlights right here on the Cox Sports Report.